If you want to be rich, a good way to achieve this is by thinking, acting, and behaving like a rich person. It was from this idea that T. Harv Eker wrote the book Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. It is a book that explains 17 ways of thinking that differentiate rich-minded people from poor-minded people. And these mental models that differentiate rich and poor are called the wealth files. To avoid poverty and achieve financial prosperity, we have to model rich-minded people. Modeling means being inspired and following similar behaviors. Therefore, we want to adopt the ways of thinking and acting that differentiate the rich from other people. Thus, the chances of achieving our financial independence are greatly increased. In today's Arata Academy summary, we're going to look at each one of these 17 well files that make up the secrets of the millionaire mind. 1. Rich people believe the following idea. I create my own life. Poor-minded people believe the following idea. In my life, things happen. Being the protagonist of your own life is a recurring theme in the area of personal development, and this also holds true for your financial future. You need to be the protagonist, and this means you must be responsible for creating your own future. The honest people who build their fortunes from scratch had to be proactive. And this is creating your own life, it is studying, working, connecting with other people. The opposite of creating one's life is taking a reactive attitude. This is the equivalent of being a victim who says, in my life, things happen. Without believing the possibility of changing our lives, we are powerless. We believe our future is already determined by the circumstances. Victimization is not taking responsibility for one's own outcome and always blaming others and complaining. Of course, this starting point has a great weight on each one's financial situation. For example, take a look at your case. You're here, you have the advantage of having access to electricity and internet. So you're here, um, you have a privileged situation compared to someone else who would be in absolute misery. This advantage will help you to build your life with financial prosperity. Whenever I speak of poor mindset and rich mindset, I'm not talking about people in situations of absolute poverty, absolute misery. The conversation is here between us. We have access to the internet. The poor mindset can be in a person with the latest model of a smartphone and driving a luxury car and at the same time worried about debt to pay. Keep focus on what you can control. The first wealth file is not about things you can't control. When you believe in the idea of I create my own life, you will immediately stop complaining, justifying yourself and blaming others for circumstances and then you can devote your attention to the choices that you can make. Number two, rich people play the money game to win. Poor-minded people get into the money game not to lose. Rich-minded people start businesses, launch products, invest in stocks, expose themselves to risk. They risk their own skin so they can reap fruits with high returns. The focus of attention is on the pursuit of high returns. The millionaire mind is playing to win. Now, those with a poor mind will focus on low risk with a false sense of security, and unfortunately low-risk opportunities often have low returns. The poor mind is playing not to lose. These are people who believe that they can leave their money in savings because it's supposed to be safe. They stay in the same job for years without asking for a raise, for fear of losing everything. And so they are slaves to their own work for the rest of their lives. Number three, rich people make a commitment to be rich. Poor-minded people would like to be rich. The reason people don't get what they want is because they don't know what they want. So now I ask you, what do you want from your life? Can you describe in every detail exactly what you want? Do you know what steps are needed to achieve what you want? Are you ready to pay the price and really commit? To be rich, you need to commit to that goal. Commitment means cutting out all other possibilities and doing what needs to be done until the goal is met. No excuses. And this is different from trying to be rich. When someone says, I will try, what means is that they will try once or twice, and if they can't, they'll give up and say, it didn't work out. The person who says they are committed, they'll keep trying as many times as necessary until the desired result is achieved. Poor-minded people just say they would like to be rich, but they don't really use their full potential to commit to meeting that goal. 4. Rich people think big. Poor-minded people think small. 
Thinking big means seeing plenty of opportunities in large-scale profits, and to profit on a large scale, you must offer huge value on a large scale. Scale means large amounts, and quality is just as important. You must devote your enthusiasm by delivering something superior, by being innovative, and your focus should be on figuring out what the market needs. The reason for so many people to be thinking small is the fear of failure, fear of loss, the fear of not being adequate enough. To stop thinking small, you have to understand your product, your service, what you can offer that will contribute to other people's lives. And if this contribution is really going to help other people, then you have the obligation to think big and offer your work to as many people as possible. Now, if you think small, you will perform few actions and you will not do your best. You'll be hiding from the world. And this will only lead to a path of resentment and scarcity. When you think big, you have a bigger impact. And then you naturally reap the rewards for a life of abundance. Number five, rich people focus on opportunities. Poor-minded people focus on obstacles. Improve your interpretation of reality. Focusing on the problem is thinking about why your project will not work. Focusing on the solution is thinking about how to overcome the difficulties. In the event of a problem, we must quickly gather the information that is necessary to take the first step toward the solution. And as we implement the plan, we are fixing the small defects, we are adding improvements, we are turning obstacles into opportunities. The opposite is to be paralyzed. Don't be procrastinating, looking for the perfect solution out of fear of failure. The fear of taking the first step comes at the price of letting the opportunity pass. Rich-minded people focus more on opportunities. Meanwhile, poor-minded people focus only on obstacles, always reactive, placing themselves as victims of circumstances. 6. Rich people admire all the rich and successful individuals. Poor-minded people resent those who are rich and successful. This is perhaps one of the most important secrets of the millionaire mind. From an early age, we are taught to see rich people as villains. In books and series and movies, comics, the rich people are always greedy people of bad character. They went over others to earn their fortune. There is inconsistency if you want to get rich while you carry all those negative associations about money and wealth. When someone says that they would rather be happy than be rich, they believe that it is not possible to be rich and also happy. There is a limiting belief, and therefore there is no coherence between intention and implementation. If, in our mind, being rich is synonymous with being bad, we are unlikely to want to do something and become something that we believe is bad, because nobody wants to be the villain of the story. Remember the importance of shaping our behavior to achieve results. If you have envy, resentment, contempt for rich people, you just won't be able to reproduce the same kind of behavior. Therefore, you have to admire and be inspired by those who already have the result you desire. What are the feelings you have about successful people? Can you realize the merits of these people? What changes can you make? What attitudes should you also take? There are good and bad rich people, just like there are also good and bad poor people. Money only enhances one's character. 7. Rich people seek the company of positive and successful individuals. Poor-minded people seek the company of negative and failed individuals. You are the average of the people you live with. We assimilate the habits, behaviors, and even the way we talk from the people we spend the most time with. Notice how, in your circle of friendship, people have more or less the same characteristics. You create your own life, and to create your own life, one of the most important choices is to select which people you will live with. Don't waste your time trying to change other people, you just control your own behavior. Raise your standards. Live with successful, positive people. Because when you live with rich-minded people, you also positively affect your thinking, your acting. You might be thinking that you don't have access to rich people. If so, you can get along with people indirectly, by reading their books, by watching their videos, and listening to their audios. Any form of contact is better than no contact at all. 8. Rich people enjoy promoting themselves. Poor-minded people do not appreciate sales or self-promotion. Many poor-minded people believe that self-promotion is inappropriate. It is shameful behavior. Rich-minded people don't have this bias with sales and self-promotion. They know they will prosper only if they are offering 
some valuable product or valuable service that will improve the lives of others. And because of this, they feel the duty to promote so that other people know about their products and services that are being sold. If you have difficulty promoting your products or services or promoting yourself, you have to understand why. Maybe in the past, someone unpleasant who has promoted something for you and even today you carry some negative association about promotions perhaps you have tried to promote something to someone in the past it didn't work really well and it caused a trauma that persists to this day perhaps you have been brought to think that it is wrong to promote yourself or believe that your work is sophisticated and intellectual and selling is a low level type of activity nine Rich people are bigger than their problems. Poor-minded people are smaller than their problems. A problem is only something that gets in the way when you can't solve the problem. The poor-minded people, they live in a world of scarcity, so they can interpret the situation to believe that they are smaller than their problems. Meanwhile, rich-minded people study, develop, they risk, and they end up getting bigger than their problems. And so they wind up in financial life much faster. The size of the problem does not matter. What matters is your size. And as you develop and you grow, you can overcome problems just by focusing on the solution. Number 10. Rich people are excellent receivers. Poor-minded people are terrible receivers. If money is a big taboo for most people, collecting and receiving money is an even bigger taboo. Poor-minded people don't like to charge for payments. They often get shy even to receive money. While the rich, they know how to charge and especially they enjoy receiving money, those with a poor mind prefer not to talk about it for fear of committing some unkindness. Even when someone gives a gift or money, poor-minded people soon say that they don't have to worry about that, that it's okay. Many people even return or refuse to receive the offer. Now, the lesson here is pretty clear. If you don't like to receive money or if you are not open to large sums, it's going to be very hard to get rich. 11. Rich people prefer to be paid for results. Poor-minded people prefer to be paid for time. The problem with getting wages on a job is that you're trading time for money. Trading time for money is an obstacle to wealth. Time is limited. You're never going to be able to work more than 24 hours in a day. The rich understand this and they use other ways to make money. Sources of income should not be limited by a factor such as the amount of hours in a day. The wealth should depend directly on the performance of your staff, of your companies, of your investments and commissions. Thus, those with a rich mindset are always motivated to improve a little, to get better results and make even more money. 12. Rich people think, I can have both. Poor-minded people think, I can have one thing or another. Poor-minded people think of scarcity and therefore they make false choices. They think, for example, that they may be poor and happy or rich and sad. This is a false choice because money and happiness have no relationship in which one excludes the other. You just need to make choices between similar items. You can have a successful career or a mediocre career. On average, you can have a good relationship with your family, you can have a bad relationship. But there is no relationship between having a successful professional career and bad relationships. You can choose a good career and also good relationships. 13. Rich people focus on their net worth. Poor-minded people focus on their monthly income. What is financial independence? This goal means forming a net worth so large that it could stop working for the rest of your life. You only work if you want to because your passive income is enough to pay all the expenses. This does not mean that you will stop working. It means that you will work with whatever you want. This is a fundamental difference because those who work for obligation can hardly generate results that are as good as those who are working for pleasure. While the rich are looking for accumulation of wealth, poor-minded people only look at salaries and benefits that they earn every single month to pay for their bills and survive until the next month. To increase your equity, you need to increase your active and also your passive income. This means that you will receive more for your daily work as well as more passive income. And this income should be saved because it is no use just earning a lot if you spend a lot. You have to simplify and cut spending on superfluous items that do not contribute to your quality of life. You must also spend your time and resources learning more and more about investments, about everything that you need to keep improving. 14. Rich people manage their money well. 
poor-minded people mismanage their money. To be rich, you need to control your spending, to have financial education, and manage your money well. No matter how much you earn, if you spend badly, you can hardly get rich. Don't make the mistake of thinking that you first need to have plenty of money before you start learning how to manage your money. Secrets of the Millionaire Mind recommends that you manage your money as follows. 10% for investments. 10% for financial education. 10% for long-term expenses. 10% for donations, 10% for fun, 50% for personal needs. There are two points I'd like to comment on here. The first one is the fun account. The idea of separating 10% of your income to spend on hobbies, fun, leisure, is that it makes no sense to work, to make money and live a lifetime of restraint until later when we are old and less healthy and perhaps enjoy a little bit. The fun account also brings a little bit of money psychology. If we don't give our brain enough rewards, sooner or later we're going to sabotage ourselves. We want to associate money uh, with good things. The second interesting point is donating 10% of all our earnings. And this is a role that many religions and philosophies of life recommend to strengthen the muscle of compassion. When we help others, we strengthen our association between money and positive things. And we also detach ourselves from money by taking our eyes off spreadsheets and focusing on the attention of the welfare of others in need. 15. Rich people put their money to work hard for them. Poor-minded people work hard for their money. Rich-minded people don't just work to make money. They also make money work for them. And that means knowing how to invest. Know how to analyze the different companies to buy the best stocks. Know how to become an entrepreneur. Know how to find good opportunities to buy low and sell high. Few people can make any money at the end of the month. Very few people can make any money uh, last until the end of the month. And among those who can, very few people invest that money. This is a big difference in thinking between the poor and the rich. 16. Rich people act despite fear. Poor-minded people are paralyzed by fear. Everyone feels fear. The rich person is also afraid of investing money and having losses. The difference is that they can act despite fear, while poor-minded people are paralyzed by fear. You can take a look at episode 131 of the series Hello, Seicharata, which is about acting despite fear. Whether starting a business, making an investment, or even asking for a raise, rich-minded people take action, even in fear. On the other hand, poor-minded people are always thinking and preparing, awaiting the pros and cons, and never actually going to action because they are stopped by fear of what might happen. 17. Rich people learn and improve all the time. Poor-minded people believe they already know everything. When it comes to financial education, entrepreneurship, and investment opportunities, the rich keep a beginner's mind. They are always interested in learning more, in improving all the time. The goal is always to know how to make money work harder and better. On the other hand, poor-minded people believe they already know everything there is to know. They believe that those who are born poor, they will die poor, and there is nothing to do about that. At Tarata Academy, our motto is your continued improvement. We understand that your personal and professional development requires you to be continually improving, always absorbing new knowledge and putting into practice what works. Secrets of the Millionaire Mind is a book that opens the eyes of many people to face some of the taboos that separate the rich and the poor. Taboos like the idea of the rich person is a bad person, people who are born poor will die poor. You have to choose between being rich or being happy. The 17 well files are a great starting point for you to start thinking and acting like a rich-minded person, increasing your chances of getting rich in the long run. But there are other financial taboos that were not explored in the book. I recorded a special class from Truly Wealthy where I show you some financial taboos that you have to overcome. And you can visit the class right now by visiting arato.se forward slash money taboo.